Can you use food as medicine? Let medicine be thy food and food be thy medicine. I think we're all familiar with this quote, which is like attributed to Hippocrates, but is it actually true? We all know the huge impact that food can obviously have on our health, but is it really true that you can actually use food as your medicine? That's what we're going to be discussing in today's video. Little disclaimer, I am not a doctor and this is just my personal opinion as a nutritionist. So first, we're going to talk about the positive impact of eating healthy in general in order to counter diseases and be healthy. So many diseases are linked to a poor diet like diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and many more. And in general, if you eat a high amount of highly processed, refined foods, then that is associated with higher risks of diseases and lower lifespan. And on the contrary, if you eat more whole foods and fruit and vegetables, whole grains, things like that, then you have a lower disease risk and a higher chance of living longer. So definitely having a healthy diet is really the basis for living a healthy, happy, full, non-disease ridden life. And the way to do that in most cases, like in, I would say 90, 99% of cases, if you're not intolerant or allergic to anything or don't have a specific health issue, the way to do that is to eat plenty of fruit and vegetables, all the fruit and vegetables you like and you can eat, to eat lots of whole grains like brown rice, whole wheat pasta, and bulgur, buckwheat, amaranth, quinoa, oats, all of that. Also to be eating healthy sources of protein and the general consensus on that is to eat mainly plant-based sources of protein like legumes, so beans, chickpeas, lentils, those things. And then there's protein in whole grains as well and things like quinoa to be eating protein from that. And then you can also add in some animal-based protein, but make sure that it's not too much. And it's also important to be getting in healthy fats like nuts, avocados, olive oil, things like that. In general, if you're eating this way, so if you're eating mainly these foods and if you're limiting the amount of processed foods, like highly refined foods, high in sugar and fat, like deeply fried foods, all of these things, junk food, if you're eating that way, then you are protecting yourself against disease. And that's like the general take on it. Do you feel like you're always going on different types of diet plans, but nothing seems to work? Do you feel like you can't control yourself around food and that your food obsession is taking up all of your energy and time? Do you wish you could build healthy eating habits that actually last without restricting yourself from any of your favorite foods and saying goodbye to dieting forever? I put together a free training that covers the eight steps you need to take in order to figure out healthy eating for good. In this training, you'll learn about which foods you should be having for optimal health, which ones you should be avoiding also, and the quantities in which you should be having them. You'll also learn why you need to incorporate the less healthy foods that you love into your diet and how you can do that. You'll learn how mindful and intuitive eating can massively help your healthy eating habits. You'll learn about the relationship with food you need to have for lasting results and more. So make sure you check out the link for that in the description. You have nothing to lose and everything to win. Now back to the video. So how can these foods, how can certain foods increase our disease rate? Diets that are really high in processed foods, ultra processed foods, and foods that are high in refined sugar, in saturated fats, and just in general junk food type of diets are all really a risk factor for disease. Things like having a high sodium intake, which happens if you eat too much junk food or like processed foods, ready meals, things like that. And also not consuming enough whole grains and not consuming enough fruit and vegetables. They're all leading dietary risk factors for disease burden and death. Obviously this doesn't mean that you can never have these foods and they can definitely be a part of a healthy and balanced diet, but they do need to be kind of like the exception rather than the norm, something that you have every single meal for like the entire meal. And if you're more interested in processed foods and learning about that, then I made a whole video on that. You can check it out here or in the description. Food should be used as prevention, not treatment. So all of this really illustrates that food is truly fundamental in living 
a healthy life, living life to the fullest without diseases and having like the longest life span possible. If you look at like traditional healing systems like Ayurvedic or even like ancient Chinese, like traditional Chinese medicine, things like that, they have definitely understood that and they definitely use food as a resource in order to help prevent and treat disease. And I think that all of that is good, but it's very important that food is used as kind of a complement for traditional medicine and not as something to replace it. This is very, very important to insist on sure food can definitely help prevent disease and can definitely help with treatment if you're eating the right things and it can definitely help promote health in general health and wellness however you still need to be taking medicine if you need it food does not replace pharmaceutical drugs and no like the the big pharma industry is not out there to get you by poisoning your food and then selling you the solution via drugs like I'm not saying that big pharma, like the ph pharmaceutical industry, I'm not saying that it's like perfect. Of course, there are certain issues. Of course, there's a money issue there, but it's really important to trust scientific professionals who do these studies and who like the scientific consensus around studies that allow certain medicines to be put on the market. And I think it's really, really important that you don't just try to self-medicate. And also like just because your best friends, uncles, cousin was able to like cure their disease thanks to like a paleo diet diet doesn't mean that it is going to work for you like anecdotal evidence i'm sure there's plenty but that doesn't mean that it's true like scientific evidence and that it's something that you can really rely on again very important i don't want people trying to self-medicate and like not taking their the drugs that their doctor prescribed. Again, food is a great tool, but should be used as something to complement whatever treatment you need to be getting. And with that being said, obviously there are certain medicinal properties in certain foods. And so I'm gonna talk about like my favorite foods that have uh, properties that have been scientifically proven and I think that it's really interesting to know that and to use that to your advantage. Again, while not being like anti Western medicine. So here are some foods that do have medicinal properties that have been studied and reviewed to test actual effects that they have. Now oh, just please keep in mind that this doesn't mean that if you eat this food it's automatically going to make you better. It just means that these foods are the type of foods that need to be incorporated into your diet more regularly. And we're going to start off with something that's not really a food but herbs and spices. I can't say enough good about herbs and spices. They are so beneficial. They are antioxidant, anti-cancer, antimicrobial, they have a bunch of anti-inflammatory properties. They are just great and if you get used to sprinkling different herbs and spices on your meals like every day or every meal even then that's such an easy way to be getting all of these benefits and if you're more interested in herbs and spices i have an entire video on them right here or in the description and then i guess this is within the herbs and spices section but i still think it deserves its own um shout out garlic is a very very good to have as an ally against diseases and to help you with disease prevention because first of all just for like common colds and flus it can be really helpful it really helps boost the immune system and also it helps reduce the severity of symptoms when you do catch like a cold or the flu or have these type of symptoms garlic is also very helpful in reducing ldl cholesterol and helping with high blood pressure and it also has a bunch of antioxidant activity antimicrobial anti-cancer as well and just anti-inflammatory in general a really great thing to add to all of your meals. Berries are also antioxidant and nutrient powerhouses in general and they can really help reduce diseases like premature aging and like anything associated with premature aging and cancer as well. Cruciferous vegetables are also a group of food that can decrease cancer and decrease heart disease and also increase longevity and so that's like things like broccoli kale cabbage all of these foods if we're looking at more global types of foods that contain omega-3s for instance these are foods that can really help with cognitive function as well as reducing like premature aging and you can find omega-3s in things like fatty fish and in like walnuts and like chia seeds, flax seeds, things like that. And then also another group of foods that can really help is anything that has like 
probiotics, rich in probiotics. And so that can really help keep your gut healthy and which in turn can help your entire immune system and help prevent diseases as well. So you can find probiotics in foods like yogurt, kefir, kombucha, miso, sourdough, kimchi, all of these things. And I do have a whole video on probiotics and prebiotics that you can check out here or in the description. I also quickly wanted to address going on different diets for specific diseases. Now I don't want to get into like all the different diets that you can do for like all the different diseases for two reasons. Um, first of all, because I'm not a doctor and I think that these things are very individual and you uh, should be talking with your doctor about like the best diet that is right for you and not just like going off suggestions from a youtube video and second of all i really truly believe that in most cases like in the majority of cases if you're eating the foods that i talked about about like mainly whole foods whole grains fruit and veggies legumes healthy fats if you're eating these foods then that is truly the best diet that you can be on the best way of eating and there's no need to go on like super specific diets to rid you of disease again not a doctor definitely talk about your specific case with your doctor however i stay pretty open to that idea of making videos on different diets different ways to eat for certain diseases if you are well aware that it's not like supposed to cure you it's just eating in a way that can kind of help manage symptoms and help in that way and that also it needs to be tailored to your specific needs so let me know if you have like specific diseases that you want me to make videos on like which diets to do for those diseases we'll see if that's something that i do but i did want to make this like general video before diving deep into that and then with that being said there is one diet that i think is really the one that everybody should try and again it works in the majority of cases it's like a diet it's not really a diet it's just eating in an anti-inflammatory way and basically this again is the same thing so eating mainly whole foods eating plenty of fruit and vegetables legumes whole grains healthy sources of protein and then eating a bunch of herbs and spices which are very beneficial antioxidant anti-inflammatory and also reducing processed foods to a maximum reducing foods that have been like fried or like highly refined things like that artificial fats and like even like saturated fats things that are really really high in refined sugar all of these things and if you eat this way i think that you are really putting all the chances on your side doing this anti-inflammatory diet is really beneficial in a lot of cases because inflammation is like the root of many many diseases so i definitely recommend giving that a try and i do have a video on how to eat in an anti-inflammatory way if you're more interested you can check that out right here or in the description so i think you have a pretty good overall view now like i said before if you're interested in me deep diving into certain specific diseases and what kind of diets can go well for them let me know in the comments and don't forget to like this video and subscribe and see you on the next one hopefully bye